Megan, I am so excited to talk to you. Thank you for joining me in the CCMA today. Oh, thank you so much. I'm pumped. Yeah, like, listen, I think it's so important that the CCMA is shining an awareness on the queer community that does exist within the country genre. It's something that's not talked about enough. So having people like yourself talk about this is really important, especially at a time like Pride Month. Happy Pride. Happy Pride to you. Yeah, I was just going to say we're here. We're here. And it's it's so good to let people know that they're seen. Yeah, they're, that's it. they're represented in country music as well. That's exactly it. Well, I'm going to start with big, exciting news. You are engaged. There were not one. Oh, there's the ring. Not one, but two proposals. So listen, we love love. We just mentioned it's Pride Month. Tell me all about this engagement and the proposals that went down. Yeah, well, my fiance now, Hillary and I have been together for five and a half years and we knew we wanted to get married for a while, but we wanted it to be safe and, you know, COVID friendly. So once all of our family members and us have been double vaccin uh, vaccinated, we decided, okay, it's time. And um, so she woke me up on May 13th. It was a Thursday morning, early in the morning and said, wake up, honey. It was like 7 a.m. She's like, we're going somewhere. Your bags are packed. We're going somewhere warm. And we ended up in Sedona, Arizona, one of our Beautiful. favorite places on the planet. And she proposed to me in a pool. We had a private pool at our resort and she proposed to me in a pool for the first time and then said, hey, I will get on one knee during this <laughs> at some point. And she did one day while we were hiking and those are what the pictures are from. So we spent the weekend in Sedona. It was so just relaxing and exciting. And then I had also prepared a proposal for her the very next weekend. So I was dying to get these rings on her fingers. So thank God it was the next weekend. And um, I proposed to her, she loves our Nashville skyline. And I proposed to her on the Virgin rooftop terrace skyline view it was amazing um and our dog dolly came out with the rings on her collar yes. and um then she thought that our dog dolly was like the big surprise and then one by one our nashville friends started coming up through the secret staircase they have at the virgin rooftop hotel and um and then her family members and our nieces and nephew came up as well so it was just so much fun we felt we both wanted to give each other that really fun, exciting moment. I love it. Again, we love, love. Congratulations, super exciting. This is a kind of vague question, but as a queer person, what do you think Hillary has brought into your life in the last five years? Oh my gosh. I mean, honestly, she just gave me so much validation of my heart for so long. Honestly, I felt like I was just a heartless person. I would be in relationships with these really amazing men who I was like, oh, I love you so much as a person, but I just can't get there with you. And Hillary just gave me equal love. Like when we met each other, it was so magnetic and it was so clear that this was my person. And we had a lot of struggles that we went through at first and it was really hard, but no matter what, just knowing that I had her by my side, I knew it was worth it. And I mean, just, she's given me, um, just an open world an open heart. And, um, I'm so thankful for her. Oh, that's so sweet. You know, you've mentioned before that there was a point where you were advised to hide your relationship, to hide who you are. And as a queer person, I know how difficult that can be, especially when you know people are saying, this could be a career killer. Like, don't do this, don't say this. Um, what was the moment for you where you were kind of like, you know what, I'm gonna be me and own who I am and be proud of who I am. When did that kind of breaking point moment happen? I had a lot of stepping stones along the way that got me to self-love and just 
there the one of the biggest things was I got really sick like really physically sick I got ulcers in my small intestine oh. and my doctor looked me in the eye and was like listen you have to get off the road like and whatever you're doing that's causing these ulcers like you need to yeah. figure it out and so basically I knew it was in a it was the emotional problem of me keeping yeah. such a big part of me you know suppressed yeah. And that was a big moment for me when a doctor looks you in the eyes and says like, Hey, you're dying. Like yeah. your body is physically dying. Um, it's not just mental abuse that, that, that was wreaking havoc on, on my body. It was also physical. And, um, so that was the first, that was the first big aha moment. Hey, this is not healthy. Yeah. And then the second big aha moment was I was reading, untamed by Glennon Doyle. Mm. And she talked about integrity and integrity, as she explained is, you know, when you are on the inside, who you project to the world. And I realized that I had absolutely no integrity. I was living my life in this little bubble with Hillary and I and our close friends and family and a completely different person to the world around me. And I just thought, why am I losing my character for someone else's comfortability, comfort, yeah. you yeah. know? And I just, in that moment, looked at Hill and I was like, babe, we have to do this. Like, we can't be silent about this anymore. Yeah. Another moment was when I was like, I just wish someone would come out so that I, so that it would make me feel more safe. Yeah. And then I was like, wait, what if other people need me to come out so that they can feel more safe? And it was just all those moments that led to it's time. It's time yeah. to be me. It's time to be genuine. Your family and close friends, you know, everybody's coming out journey is so different. There's no way to say, this is how you come out. This is what you should do. This is what you say. How did your family and friends, um, I hate the word react, but how did they react to you coming out and sharing this part of yourself with the world? Yeah. My friends were amazing. Every single one of them were like, oh, okay, that totally makes sense. Like that's 100% understand. Yep. We get it. Yeah. Um, and it made my relationship with my friends so much closer because there mm -hmm. wasn't that wall anymore and we could just fully know each other yeah. and fully be ourselves and express these our, express ourselves with each other. But um, my family coming out with my family was really hard. Um, my mom and dad at first were not accepting at all. Um, it was really, really bad. Now they're both on the other side, have done a complete 180 um, and just wish that they could have given me the unconditional love that they thought they were giving, but their fear took over their love. And so um, now, now we're great. I'm so happy to hear that. Listen, it does, you know, sometimes it does take a minute for people to process things, especially parents, you know, it's 2021. There is so much more queer media out there. So there is a better understanding, but at times it is really difficult for parents to process. And we do have to give them a moment to take it in. And like you said, now they're on the other side. And I love to hear that so much. There's, you know, in the last year, there's been a lot of queer people coming out within country music, yourself, like TJ Osborne. We have more queer people at the forefront of country music. Do you think this is a thing that will continue of people owning who they are and speaking about things like the LGBTQ plus community? And how is country music going to progress past the idea that there isn't a space for queer artists? Totally. 100%. I think that we're just at the beginning of people yeah. owning who they are. I think that we really needed a few people to be fully out to create a safe place. So it wasn't just pinpointed on like, oh, well, there's that one gay country artist. It's like, yes. there are a lot of queer people in this community. There are a lot of pure yeah. queer people that are listening to this music. And for so long, we've been unrepresented. And I just think that visibility is so important. And the more and more that people see queer people in country music, the more and more they realize that we're just artists in country music and you don't always have to put the queer in front of it. You're absolutely right. And listen, I worked in country music for about 12 years. I actually met you maybe like 
six years ago or five years ago at a CRS. So it's a little reunion yes. for us. Um, yes. But yeah, I kind of feel like the tide is turning in a way. And I feel like even the CCMA having conversations like this yeah. is imperative in, you know, acceptance within the country genre. I love that you released new music with a new sense of self, I'll say in a way, a trilogy, the latest being uh, Got No Choice. Do you feel like now you can be authentically yourself and has that affected your music now moving forward? Oh, 100%. I mean, when I decided that I wanted to be visible and you know, make a very private part of my life somewhat public. Yeah. I went to my label and had that conversation and just said, hey, if we're going to be putting out music, I have to be me. I can't be half of me anymore. And they 100% stood behind me and were like, let's go. We support you. Let's do this. So yes, I totally feel like I can be myself now. It's completely opened my world in every aspect, including writing songs Again, there's no barrier between me and my co-writers anymore. I don't have to worry about, oh, are they going to be upset or whatever. If they don't like who I love, then we can't write together anyways. We're not going to write a great song anyways. So, you know, it's, I think that I was such a people pleaser for such a long time. And that's now gone. That burden of being a people pleaser is gone out of my life. And now I just get to live my life for me and what makes me a good person so um yeah it's changed everything it makes me so happy we don't have to name names here but i do think it is important to hear you know within the country genre because like listen there's a lot of artists out there who i know from working in the industry support the queer community yeah. however they're still afraid to vocalize that in media Mm -hmm. um, did you have any artists, again, you don't have to name names, but reach out to you personally and just say, you know, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of this. Like, were there people that reached out? Oh, yeah. I mean, man, we were around this industry. I mean, I'm an artist and always out, you know, a couple times a week yeah. in industry parties, industry events. And Hillary, my fiance, works for Garth Brooks. So we're around that as well. And I mean, I'm talking the cowboy of cowboys have come up to us and just said how happy they are for us. And, yeah. um, you know, it's, we haven't had any negative feedback from any country artists at all. It's all been love. It's all, I mean, Luke Bryan, you know, Karen Fairchild, which you would so expect oh, from yeah. Big Town, Philip Sweet from Little Big Town. I mean, there has just been such a, wealth of love that has come our way and yeah in the beginning it was really nerve-wracking like what are people going to say but yeah it also it comes with this strength of like this is my person and as long as I have this person by my side like we got this like we're going to get through everything and I think that that kind of confidence also exudes out into a room and you see that this couple is like damn okay this looks this looks like me and, and my significant other you know exactly. so um we we've been received with with uh, so much love and support um it is pride month at the end of the got no choice video there is a shout out to the trevor project which is super important why did you want to include the trevor project at the end of that video yeah well i felt you know, we went through much longer of a struggle than we have, you know, on the other side of the rainbow, if you will. Mm. And I wanted people who are struggling to know that there was another side to this. It wasn't always sunshine and rainbows, but it can be, and it will be if you just keep on putting in the work on yourself. And I think that the Trevor Project is such an incredible way to help someone questioning or someone figuring out how am I going to tell my family or where is my safe space yeah. the Trevor project is a great resource for anyone having those questions and I didn't know about the Trevor project when I was going through my journey so I as soon as I found out about it and learned about all the resources that are available to us as a queer community I was like I have to tell everybody I have to shout this from the rooftops yeah. so that was how we decided 
we could be a part of, of helping other people on their journey. It's beautiful. So this is essentially your first Pride Month as a fully out, queer, loud, proud artist. Yeah. Um, how, yeah, that's incredible. Happy yeah, Pride so again. Pretty-eyed. I know, it's so exciting. <laughs> it's, it feels so good to just be yourself. And I think, you know, as queer people, we've all had the struggle. Like you hit on some really, um, important things there that I felt within my own career, you know, being a people pleaser and those types of things. But now that you are out loud and proud, what would you say pride means to you? And how are you going to celebrate your very first pride season? Yes. Well, pride to me means visibility. It means showing love. And, you know, sometimes that will be not received as well as you want it to, but that's okay. That's just meaning that we're making a wave. We're creating a conversation. So yes, Pride Month is so important for visibility and also just to celebrate how far we have come yeah. and to look toward the future and see how far we have to go. But really for me, Pride is just celebrating love and also just self-love. It doesn't have to be between two people, just self-love and knowing that you are deserving of love, no matter what your orientation, no matter who you love, you deserve it. You are so right. What are you and Hillary going to do? I don't know what's happening in Nashville there. Are things all open? Will there be a pride kind of parade? What's the plan for pride? Yeah, so pride is moved to to September this year in Nashville. Yes, but we will be, we will be there with bells on. We're so excited. I'm actually um, a part of the LA Pride Festival this weekend called Out Loud that I'm so excited about. And um, yeah, I mean, we're just going to be like in rainbows celebrating love all month long and actually into September as a lot of the Pride festivals down here are moved to September. So it's just going to be like months of just celebrating love. I love Nashville. It is such a great city. I haven't been back in a few years, but maybe in 2022, I will come down for Pride in Nashville because that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh my gosh, let me know. We'll hang out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Yes. With, all, with all that you've been through on this journey of self-acceptance and self-discovery and self-love, what advice, Brooke, would you give to anyone who's queer out there. I mean, maybe they're an artist, maybe they're just living at home in a small town with, you know, parents that they don't think will accept them. What advice would you give from your own experiences? I think that what I would say is that everyone is 100% on their own path. Don't let anyone else push you or hold you back from your own process. Like, Whatever that process might be, mine took me so much longer than I thought it was going to. And it was frustrating, but I came out on this other side so strong in who I am. So I never, I would never push someone to come out before they were ready to come out. But I will also say that the fear of coming out for me and so many others that I know was so much bigger than the reality of coming out. So just know that there is a loving community out here, even if it's, even if it isn't your blood right away. Yeah. The queer community is so loving and so accepting and so here with open arms to just pull you in and and put you under our wing that you will have love and you will have a community. And hopefully your parents or your family will come around. Maybe they'll even just be like, yeah, honey, we've known that forever. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. (laughs) No, it's, it's, I'm so excited. There are people like yourself out there who keep spreading this kind of awareness and it's really important. So I thank you so much, Brooke, for doing what you're doing and owning who you are and spreading the love. It's so important. I always want to ask people because I think it's important to put it out into the universe. Um, I'm a big believer of putting stuff out into the universe. So let's say 2022, what does Brooke dream of? What is on that bucket list? I would love to be on a tour, like a very country core tour, Mm. maybe with like Thomas Rhett, Lady Annabellum, Dan and Shay. One of those. Incredible. And you know what? Those are all, again, country music is such a family. I've worked with all of those people many times and 
everyone is always just so sweet. I love country music. And I think that's what we need to do is break down this barrier that there isn't a space for queer people because all three of those acts you just mentioned, you know, they're all accepting. I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, but. Yes. Oh yes. I, I too know them and love them and know that they love us right back. So yeah. um, it, it's definitely a new world and it's not, it's not the old school country uh hetero no. world it's not we are moving in a forward progression and you gotta get on board or get off the wagon <laughs> love it get on board or get off the wagon because the queers are coming and we are here <laughs> yes. Yes. thank you so much brooke for chatting with me this was a lot of fun and um thank you to the ccma again it's really yes. important that we're doing this and hopefully i'll see you at nashville pride in 2022 yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. This was fun. Yes. <laughs>